You know about uh, something called thermal expansion, uh, most likely, even if you haven't heard that term before. Thermal expansion is uh, why you might have been told when you had a jar that was stuck to run it under hot water. And uh, when you do that, you find that uh, the jar is pretty easy to, uh, uh, to unscrew at that point. Uh, what's going on at, in this situation, we can understand best at, uh, at the atomic level. And we think of, uh, of the atoms that make something up as, uh, as being separate atoms, but they're, they're connected. They have these forces that hold them together. So we can imagine those forces as being like springs. They can stretch or compress, but you know, overall they, they hold the basic shape of this thing together. So this is an, al an analogy that works best for, uh, uh, for solids. But you know, the, the results of the analogy hold true for, uh, for most materials. Um, water is a, a notable exception here that behaves a little strangely. We'll come back to that, though. Um, so if we think of, uh, of you know, the atoms as being these little particles, remember that uh, the kinetic model says that you know, these things are constantly in a little bit of motion. You know, they're bouncing around a little bit. Those springs might be stretching or compressing. And if we, uh, if we cause the, um, the bouncing to increase, if we get more bouncing around, uh, more energy, more kinetic energy in these atoms, then we might expect that you know, those atoms would start to get farther apart now that we have more energy. Those springs, they stretch more with the, the increased motion. So with a little less motion, we have you know, these things are closer together. With a little bit more, they get further apart. Okay, and so what's really changing is the, the amount of empty space in here between the, uh, between the atoms or between the molecules. Um, but on the, the macroscopic level, when we're looking at this object, we can't tell that it's the empty space that's increased. It looks like the object has just gotten bigger. So if we go back to running the, uh, um, the jar, the lid of the jar under the, the hot water, what that's doing is heating up just the metal part here, or mostly the metal part here. And uh, when that metal part heats up, the whole thing expands, and so the, the lid becomes a little bit looser on the jar, and we're able to, uh, to remove it at that point. Now, how much expansion we see is going to depend on a couple of different factors. Um, first off, the, the change in length is going to depend on what length we started with. So we know that we're really just changing empty space, uh, the amount of empty space between our molecules. So how many molecules we start with and how they're ordered, that's going to have an impact on things. So that starting length, and we're, we're just going to consider expansion in one dimension here, but you could certainly do two and three dimensional um, expansion. We just, that's outside the scope of, uh, of what we'll do. Uh, so this, this starting length of this material, we'll call that L naught. And that'll be at some temperature, uh, T1 here. And then the uh, we'll, we'll say heat that up a little bit so it expands. It gets a little longer. Um, we do that at T2, or the, the new temperature is T2. And we can see that we've added this little purple section onto it. Now, it's not really been added. It's just been stretched out. Um, and so that stretching takes place when we add a little empty space in between the atoms. So that distance that, uh, that our length has changed by, we'll call that delta L. The change in temperature is going to be delta T, and then we have this alpha symbol, uh, the little fish thing. So the alpha is going to represent the coefficient of linear expansion, and that's just a property of the material. So some materials tend to uh, expand a lot when they're heated, some only expand a little tiny bit, when they're heated, and so this number uh, expresses that, uh, that quality of the material. And the units for that are going to be a little bit strange. They're going to be uh, per degrees Celsius, or the inverse of degrees Celsius. And the units there are just so that when we use this equation, our length comes out in meters, or centimeters, or you know, some lengthy unit anyway. So the equation then, the change in the length is equal to our coefficient of linear expansion in per degrees Celsius times the starting length times the change in temperature. And so you can see here, since T2 was hotter than T1, delta T is going to be a, a positive number. And so delta L then is going to be a positive number as well.
Now, if T2 were colder than T1, then delta T would be a negative number, delta L would be negative also. So this whole object would, instead of expanding, it would contract, it would get smaller, and our delta L would be in the other direction here. Um, but the, uh, this, this equation works out pretty well for, uh, uh, for most materials. We'll typically apply it to solids. Uh, water, like I said, is a notable example. With water, we have this weird thing where when water changes from a liquid into a solid, when it freezes, um, the water expands. The solid arrangement of molecules takes up more space than the liquid arrangement of molecules. You have discovered this the hard way if you ever left um, say a, a bottle of water or a can of pop in your freezer a little too long and then had to spend a few hours cleaning up the little bits of uh, exploded can all over the, the inside of your freezer. Uh, so that, that water will expand quite forcefully, uh, which also does things like cause potholes and big cracks in our streets um, and cause uh, you know water main uh, cracks to, to happen when the water inside the pipes freezes or when the water in the ground freezes and expands and it shifts the whole ground and the pipes break that way. Uh, so thermal expansion really can cause, uh, uh, can cause a lot of headaches for sure. Um, so it's something we, we definitely need to be careful with and, and know something about.